let's go ahead and discuss some of the basics about the SAT subject test in chemistry. The first question you must ask yourself is, should you take it in the first place? Now this is going to depend on the particular colleges that you're looking at. Just because you've taken chemistry, just because you've taken AP chemistry, is not necessarily a reason that you should take the exam. Uh, most colleges are going to tell you what their requirements or suggestions are for SAT subject tests. Some will say one, some will say two, some will say none. Whatever the case may be, my recommendation to you is take the number that you need to and focus on the ones that you know you'll do well on. So focus on your best subjects. And if chemistry is one of them, great, go ahead and take this test. If it's not, don't just take it because you think you have to or you think that it would look good. Take it with the knowledge that you're going to do well on it. That's kind of the first step to your success. Um, I would rather see you, and I think colleges would rather see you take two subject tests or at most three subject tests and score really well on them than to take five subject tests and you know be me mediocre in half of them. So just pick and choose, be very careful. Okay, once you've decided that you're going to take it, well, what's the test look like? Well, like a regular SAT section, SAT math or SAT reading, it's scored between 200 and 800, and in a future video, we'll talk more about the scoring. However, you only have 60 minutes to take the test. Uh, this is good because you can actually take more than one SAT subject tests at a time in a sitting, um, which is great because it can help you kind of work out your uh, application schedule. You can take, you know, your math and your chemistry and your history, whatever you're going to take all in one sitting, which is great. But that means, as you can see, there's 85 questions, so you don't have much time per question, right? You've got less than a minute per question, so you really got to move. You got to be very careful with your timing on this, and we'll talk about pacing in a little bit. But for now, one other thing, they mentioned it's, I got this from the uh, SAT subject test website, they mentioned it's 85 multiple choice questions. It's a bit uh, deceptive because they're not, as we're going to see, the classic pure multiple choice questions. Most of them are, but a good chunk of the test, if, actually you've thought more than half of the test, is going to be a different kind of question that we're going to look at more closely when we talk about the question types. So it is multiple choice questions, but it's a little bit more complex than that. There's some strange question types that we got to look at first. Uh, and a couple other things about the test that you should know. First, no calculators allowed. Now you might ask, well, what am I supposed to do on questions where there's math? And it's true, there are some questions that require math, but that math is going to be mental math. It's going to be simple calculations, simple fractions, simple, you know, 1 to 10, 1 to 2 ratios. Very easy to do in your head, so don't worry about that. And if there were a problem where the math weren't easy, they'll actually just have you pick the choice that sets up the calculation. So you don't actually have to find the answer, you just got to show them the math calculation you do to get to that answer. So it's not as big of a deal as you might think. The second thing is the information they do give you as reference is only the periodic table. In fact, it's this periodic table here. So it only gives you the symbol, the atomic number, and the uh, mass. So not much information there, but at least you have that to help you. So that's the basics of the subject test. Let's talk about how to score uh, or how the test is scored and about guessing strategy.